In video three of our preseason series, we'll talk about coach education, sports-specific regulations, ejections, and fines. We'll start with the coaching requirements. The NCHSA and its member schools place a high value on coaching education. With that in mind, there are several National Federation of State High School Associations or NFHS courses that coaches are required to take before coaching NCHSAA teams. The NFHS Fundamentals course provides a unique student-centered curriculum for interscholastic teachers, coaches, and assisting them in creating healthy and age-appropriate athletic experience that supports the educational mission of our nation's schools. Currently, this is a one-time course requirement that costs $35. Prior to the first date of competition, all head coaches and assistant coaches must obtain this NFHS Fundamentals of Coaching certification. There is a $500 fine for non-compliance and an additional $500 fine for coaching in a contest without an NFHS fundamental certification. Second, the NFHS concussion course highlights the impact of sports-related concussion on athletes. It teaches how to recognize a suspected concussion and provides protocols to manage a suspected concussion with steps to help players return to play safely after a concussion. This annual course is offered online free of charge. Prior to the first practice, all coaches must complete the NFHS Concussion in Sports What You Need to Know online course or equivalent concussion curriculum. There is a $500 fine for non-compliance and an additional $500 fine for coaching in a contest without an NFHS concussion certification. Additionally, the NCHSA values the health and safety of our student athletes and has mandated that all paid and head coaches must be CPR and AED certified. This certification must come from an accredited agency such as the American Red Cross or American Heart Association and be valid and current. Most certifications are good for two years. Volunteer or unpaid coaches must complete the NFHS Sudden Cardiac Arrest course. Many NCHSAA sports have specific concerns as it relates to health and safety. Therefore, the NCHSA has partnered with the NFHS to help educate coaches in several specific areas especially within the sports of cheerleading and track and field, the event of pole vault. There are some additional sports-specific NFHS certifications that are required before the first date of practice in these sports. The head cheerleading coach is required to take the NFHS American Association of Cheerleading Coaches Spirit Safety Certification. This course provides information and strategies to help you evaluate your current safety program with the goal of minimizing the risks involved in cheerleading. This course presents how to teach the proper techniques of cheer and dance to minimize the risk associated with participation. The pole vault head coach is required to take the NFHS coaching pole vault course. This course has been designed to help both coaches and athletes. Coaches will learn to develop and teach the introductory skills of pole vaulting to your students. After completing this course, each participant will have a better understanding of the fundamentals of pole vaulting as well as the best practices and techniques that will help educate and promote safety within the sport. All of the NFHS courses mentioned can be found on the NFHS website at www.nfhslearn.org. The NCHSAA also mandates that coaches stay up to date with the rules and regulations of their sport by mandating head coaches to attend an NCHSAA state rules clinic every year prior to the first contest of the season. These clinics are offered at the North Carolina Coaches Association Clinic held in Greensboro. The requirement can also be satisfied by attending a regional state rules clinic conducted for game officials. Times and locations for state regional clinics can be found on the NCHSAA website on the sports-specific page. Non-compliance with this requirement will result in an initial $400 fine and an additional $500 fine per game for non-compliance. Since we've talked about fines, we want you to know what happens if or when those fines are not paid. Schools with unpaid fines are not eligible to compete in the playoffs for that sport unless the fine is paid prior to the playoff reporting date for that sport. For example, a baseball fine would be specific to the baseball playoffs. Any fine not paid at the end of the fiscal year, which is June 30th, will carry over to the following school year, making all teams at that school ineligible for playoffs until the fine is paid in full. Next, it's very unfortunate, but sometimes ejections happen during a high school contest. If ejected from a contest, a student must miss one game in football and two games in all other sports. 
If participants, coaches, or other team representatives, including chain crew, official scorers, and timers use any tobacco product, alcoholic beverage, or controlled substance at a game site, an ejection can occur. Fighting and leaving the bench are also grounds for ejection. Flagrant contact is defined as combative acts such as maliciously running over the catcher or a fielder without attempt to avoid contact, excessive contact out of bounds or away from playing action that is unwarranted and extreme in nature, tackling or taking down a player dangerously in a malicious manner, or illegally hitting or cross-checking an opponent in an excessive manner with the lacrosse stick. Other offenses which are grounds for ejection are biting, taunting, baiting or spitting towards an opponent or official, profanity directed toward an official or opponent, obscene gestures including gesturing in such a manner as to intimidate or instigate, and disrespectfully addressing an official. Details about ejections can be found in the NCHSA handbook, which can be found on our website. So what happens after an ejection? In addition to serving the game suspensions, any head coach who is ejected from a contest or has a student ejected for fighting must take the NFHS Teaching and Modeling Behavior course before returning to coaching. There is a cost associated with this course, and the certificate of completion must be faxed or emailed to the NCHSAA. In addition to serving the game suspensions, any student ejected from a contest for fighting must take the NFHS Sportsmanship course before returning to competition. We hope that this video has helped you understand some of the rules and expectations of the NCHSAA as it relates to coaching requirements, fines, and dealing with unsportsmanlike behavior or ejections. Thank you for watching.